Well, yesterday I did a demonstration of passing action figures, the Game Changer quarterback. Today I want to do some more passing practice, but this time with passing sticks. Now, uh, coincidentally, Brandon Sigers just dropped uh, a great video demonstrating Tudor's new passing sticks. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description of this upload. Be sure to check that out because it's a great demonstration. And happily, he reports that the uh, plastic passing sticks are from Tudor are quite durable. And I'm happy to hear that. But we'll be using my wooden passing sticks for this demonstration. Let's uh, just go ahead and begin here. Uh, start very, very short passes. Uh, let's just go ahead and measure that. Yep, that definitely falls within the short pass range, so we'll use a red passing stick. Put the ball marker here like so. And we'll uh, grab the remote control and see if this is a completed pass. It sure is. And at this point in the EFHL, we would uh, pivot the ball carrier and uh, give the defense the switch. Let's try another one from a different sort of angle. Suppose we're going to throw upfield like so. Let's measure it again. Make sure it's short yardage. It sure is. Okay. Put it back here. Little short passes like this are kind of hard to miss, especially with good bases or reliable bases with consistent movements. Let's see. That's complete. And, you know, maybe... We'll do one this way. Maybe we'll, this will almost be a lateral pass, but not quite. Let's measure it, though, and make sure it's still within just barely. Okay. So there's the measurement. Use the ball marker. Put it there like so. And... Let's see if he throws a complete pass here. Ooh, that was actually incomplete. He uh, just decided to bounce up and down. Let's put him back. This is that part of the field that I've talked about in the past. Okay, well, he hit it that time. Okay, now, let's, uh, here's a scenario. Quarterback's about to get hit. That's uh, the living, breathing definition of defensive pressure right there. So, uh, first we'll measure the pass. Uh, that's just barely short yardage, but he's under defensive pressure, so we'll use a defensive pressure stick. It's going to be a little more challenging to make this completion. Okay. There we go. Oh, he missed it. Incomplete. See? I mean, even with just a little defensive pressure, he missed that pass. Let's try again. Um, let's uh, just take it down the middle and see what happens here. Probably don't even need to measure that, but we will. Okay, let's actually put him back because he's just outside the range. There we go. Okay. Defensive pressure. Okay. That's complete. Okay, now we'll take this defender off the board. Actually, no, we won't. We'll, we'll start having some fun with some other scenarios. Let's extend the range here on the measurement. Okay, that's definitely going to be a white stick pass because it falls outside the red stick range. Okay. Well, let's make things interesting. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it fair, I guess, or as fair as possible. Um, this comes down to whoever has a faster base, really. Whoops. Forgot to put the ball marker down. There we go. Now, three things could happen. Well, four things could happen. He's either going to catch this pass, he's going to miss it, and it's incomplete. He's going to, uh, miss it, and this figure is going to hit it, which makes that an interception. Or there's going to be a collision, which could be pass interference. Uh... We won't know that what kind of pass interference until it happens. So and that may not happen. Let's see. Ooh, we got a completion, and now he's set up to run that into the end zone, possibly. Like, why don't we just play that scenario out? How curious 
I want to see that. So in EFHL rules, he's going to pivot away from the defender, obviously. Defense gains control of the switch. Okay, now the defense is going to pivot. He's going to try to catch that guy before he hits the end zone. Let's see if we can kind of judge the angle there. Let's see what happens. Remember, front of base tackle is imperative here. Oh, he missed it. Okay, that's a touchdown. Cool little scenario. Well, now let's see. Let's put the quarterback back on here. Now we'll do this. Now, we'll just give him the inside route. And, you know, just a little ahead like so. So we'll measure it. Okay, that's going to be a white stick. But now let's assume he's under defensive pressure, the quarterback, McMahon back here. So we're going to have to do this. So, you know, this is an uncertain pass. So what I would be t tempted to do is to sort of angle it out this way. There may be some bumping, you know, some hand slapping on the way there. So I would try to do something like this, perhaps to prevent an interception but still try to gain a pass. Now, if we look at this objectively, it doesn't look like he might even uh, land that. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, nice completion. Uh, that was a, a dangerous throw, but it worked out. But now, let's switch it up. Suppose he has the outside route, and the defender has the inside route. We'll, we'll still assume that's uh, a white medium yardage passage, and we'll go ahead and say he's under defensive pressure. In this case, I would probably throw it a little, you know, like this to keep keep it out of the hands of the, uh, see how it's kind of oblique? Only slightly, though. This is not a guaranteed completion, especially... If there's no, uh, uh, if there's no um, battle headed towards the magnet here, let's see. Yep, they both missed it. So they both drifted to the left on that. Okay. Well, now let's really start to challenge ourselves here. Um, this is going to be a pretty long pass. Um, just do something like this. This is not a pass I would normally make, I don't think. Okay, we're way outside the measuring stick, so that's going to be a blue, a long yardage pass. Uh, he's he's not under defensive pressure. Um, very dangerous pass right here because this gentleman could easily intercept. However, let's see what happens here. Oh, we'll have to go back and look at that, but that could very easily have been pass interference. Um, that probably happened within one uh, vertical uh, base length of the ball, which you know, in EFHL rules, that's not interference, but uh, uh, 47 did prevent 15 from catching that ball. Uh, we just have to look at that on replay and do a review. I think it was probably not interference. I probably wouldn't call that. Others watching may be howling right now. That was totally interference. So, hey, that's the game of football. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, it's just a... Uh, you know, I won't measure that because that's clearly... Now we're talking about a very dangerous path. And I'm going to angle this guy to catch this defender to actually catch this interception. Just a question of who gets there first and who deviates the least from their course. Here we go. Oh, nice job, Jim McMahon. Uh, it's a good catch. And you saw how far he overshot. I mean, uh, he did not stay with the, the receiver who was stopped by the ball itself. So, you know, now we pivot. There's no chance he's going to catch him. He's going to march it into the end zone. Okay, let's put him under defensive pressure now. Something like this. We're just making some very challenging passes here that 
kudos on this defend on this uh, receiver number fifteen for catching these passes. He should not be. <laughs> That's not so consistently this time he won't. But we're still going to make this a little challenging. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, pretty cut and dry, wouldn't you say? Number 47 intercepted. Uh, you know, he got hung up on the, the base. Now, you could make a case maybe they touched that ball marker at the same time. We'd either have to go back and look at instant replay or we'd have to roll an ability check using EFHL rules um, for both players. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we've seen what these figures can do running straight lines, you know, with their bases calibrated to run straight down the field. Why don't we uh, change that up a little bit? Here's the scenario. Um, this uh, receiver has the outside route from the quarterback, we'll say. There we go. Um, it's very dangerous. Let's see, this won't be a... Let's make this a medium yardage passage. Pass right here. Um... And we'll say the quarterback is under defensive pressure. So this, you know, very dangerous pass uh, because of the nature of uh, the way these bases bump each other headed downfield. The, the, the Pittsburgh defender could easily intercept a pass like this. So, well, we've got these bases with dials. Why don't we try something? Now, we need to turn, let's see, this dial to his left. Okay. And, you know, you can't turn him too much or he's just going to miss. But we're going to turn it that much and see what happens. That should, that should give us something here. But the art, the skill, the uh, expertise in all this is anticipating exactly um, how far he's going to turn as a result of that movement. So we're going to put the passing stick maybe, I don't know, right here. And, uh, let's see what happens. I mean, if you didn't know his dial was turned hard to his right, actually. I said left. It's actually right. I have done this correctly. Um, if you didn't know that I'd done that, you would think, well, he's clearly going to miss this. Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Well, he missed it, but boy, that was close. Let's try it again. Now that we sort of know, we'll still uh, say this is a def under defensive pressure. And uh, this time, we'll angle it just a little further like this. Now that we had a, a chance to see exactly <clears throat> how far he's turning his route there. Maybe this time we can hit it. Maybe we won't. Look at that. Now he's got broad daylight to the end zone. So that's another cool thing you can do with passing sticks. You don't have to keep these guys running straight up and down the field. You can try things. Um, let's just uh, watch him with his base curve the way it is right now. Okay. So, um, suppose, let's go ahead and make him just a little less loopy here. Okay. Now, same thing with a defender on his on his tail here. Actually, a defender right beside him. We'll put McMahon way back here so that we know this is a, a blue pass. And we'll make it a blue pass under defensive pressure. But now this time, we'll only angle it this much. Um, actually not even that much. We're just going to angle it about that much because we, we reduced the amount of loop he's going to do now. There's a lot of math involved in this. Quick math. And he also might get bumped by the uh, defender who might knock him off his course. Uh, technically pass interference, but um, it has to sort of be egregious. I mean, obviously, if he comes at him from this angle, of course that's pass interference. If the, once the the board is turned on but at this point you know he's just he's just running he's just pursuing his uh, assignment his his assigned defender let's see what it transpires here look at that 
we uh, we did the math correctly so uh that's cool now let's take him the other way this time let's turn his dial this way and uh, let's exaggerate here let's see if we can come up with something uh, spectacular now this is contingent on him having the inside route this time uh, so we'll put him right there but uh, let's assume there's also some a safety here or something. Um, and uh, we're still under defensive pressure, so we're going to make this challenging. But we uh, turn that base really hard. So maybe we do something like that, where there are no defenders. Uh, so his route is going to change. You know, this is the... Uh, well, if we were closer to the sideline, this would be the uh, uh, post route. Something like this. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. But I think you see what I have in mind here. Um, perhaps this defender has no idea that he's about to change his route and head towards midfield. Um, so, you know, once... And you remember, the offense has control of the switch during a pass. So there's nothing he can do about this until the pass is caught or uh, the end of the play. So let's see. Okay, I, I cut it way too deep. Okay. Okay, well, you know what? Let's put it back. And now that we've seen it happen once, is there any way that we can angle this passing stick? As long as it's in front of him, you know? Is there any way we can angle this to where he makes this catch? I probably not. I probably cut the dial too deep. But, um, let's just see. Very close, very close. I tell you what, we're going to try it one more time. As I continue to sit here and do this this head math, uh, um, you know, I, I really don't think there's a way to do it. Not with the dial. Now, if the quarterback wasn't under defensive pressure, I actually think we might pull this off. Like so. That's probably about as, about as far back as I go with this. It's going to be very close. So let's see. Ooh, he almost caught that pass. So, I mean, you can see what you can do with these these bases with dials on them to, to spice up your game. It's not all straight up and down the field with these things. But now let's look at the base here. We need to make, a, make an adjustment. This takes a lot of practice, you know, to know exactly how far you should turn these dials to get specific action and i'm sure it depends on the the type of base whether it's itz or total team control and uh and other concerns now we're just trying some things now we we don't have much to prove at this point okay he's not under defensive pressure you know putting it here would be fairly dangerous i think so we're going to angle it like this and see if we can come up with uh, a reception. Okay, here we go. Yes! Very good. And now we'll uh, go ahead and try to set his dial to neutral. Not an easy prospect. This usually takes a few minutes of running them up and down the field to see if they actually will go straight when they're set to neutral. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, this is the, from the supplemental EFHL rules. We're going to throw a Hail Mary pass. Quarterback is back in his own end zone. Uh, this is all or nothing. Uh, he's gonna, the defender is going to be more than 70 yards away from him, right about there. And uh, so what we're going to do is use the measuring stick itself as the passing stick. It doesn't matter which end. All right, so he has very few options for a play here. Um, we're going to assume that's the best option. In fact, I'm going to use this to mark precisely where the figure is. And we're going to turn his dial ever so slightly this way. And uh, we're going to see what happens. And, you know, obviously on a Hail Mary pass, most of your defensive backs are going to be waiting in the end zone. That way they could easily, you know, pick this off or bat it down or whatever. But just for demonstration per Oops! I forgot to uh, mark mark the play. Well, so there's the ball marker. 
and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see this. This, you know, obviously this takes a, a huge amount of skill to pull off consistently, or even once, let alone consistently. Here we go. Okay, way too deep, way too deep cut. I mean, you would, you're gonna need to come back even less than that. I mean, you know, we're about out here. Let's see. Hmm. Pretty close. Uh, you, know, you can practice this and get good at it. You can figure out exactly how far to turn these dials. You can do some really cool stuff. There it was. You know, it's hard to do when under pressure. I mean, when, you know, in the heat of the moment in the game. I mean, that's, especially if you're playing in a league with uh, timed actions, you know, where you have to make your pass within 20 seconds or something. That adds the pressure to what you're doing. It's, sometimes it's it's hard to do the, the appropriate math. But, you know, let's check for consistency here. Put them right about at the same place. Now, see, that time he didn't make, he didn't turn his route. So this time maybe we'll angle him a little that way. Let's see what happens. Cut too shallow that time. So there's a little luck, obviously, with a Hail Mary pass. Remember, the quarterback is throwing all the way from back here. So. Yeah, not that time. Well, there you have it. That's uh, how a Hail Mary uh, pass works in the EFHL. But uh, it's been quite fun. I want to do some more scenarios here. This is, you know, I love using those passing quarterbacks and the, 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 the you know, the toe pro kicker. That's really fun to play with those, but after a while, it, that rig begins to really hurt my back. I don't know why. I do crawl around in the floor a lot looking for the uh, felt footballs. This way, though, I'm, I mean, I could keep doing this for another hour or two, but uh, we'll just do uh, a few more scenarios here. Um, let's try to build a scenario. Oops, I got it backwards. Well, that's going to be a, a medium yardage pass. Um, let's put, yeah, about like this. Um, you know what, though? We're going to have to neutralize his base. Okay. That time we used the passing stick itself as the, the spot marker. Now, better put him back a little bit. I've sort of set up a scenario here where either one of these players could hit catch this ball. Let's see if we can eyeball who catches it. Neither one of them. Okay. Well, let's just sit here and do something here. I just want to demonstrate something. Here we go. Um, instant replay would probably tell us who caught that ball at first. It's probably the Pittsburgh figure. Um, but if you're not certain, if you're not using a camera, uh, in the EFHL, you can roll that opposed ability check. Uh, whoever wins the ability check has caught the ball. If they both pass their ability check, whoever has the higher player rating caught the ball. If they both have an equal, num uh, equal number of player rating points, you keep rolling ability checks with diminishing returns, a, a negative modifier each time to the target number, until someone wins and someone loses. So that, that would resolve that. That said, I'm pretty sure the, the Pittsburgh player won the... Uh, got to the ball first. I'm pretty sure. Let's try... Just try this a few times here, see if we can get a... Yeah, that time clearly this Pittsburgh guy, he, uh, he, he missed it. But now let's uh, talk about pass interference. Um, let's say... There we go. This is pretty blatant. But uh, let's say McMahon throws the ball here. Uh, this figure does not have a play on this ball. This defender does, but that was offensive pass interference. Um, that's blatant offensive pass interference, and that was easy to tell. And by the same token, suppose um, our uh, gentleman here, number 15, does have a play on this ball. This is a catchable pass, but... Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll put him about right there. This occurs. That's defensive pass interference. But now, what if it happens within one vertical base length of the ball? 
Well, in the EFHL, that would not be pass interference. That's just good defense, like so. Okay. Uh, I think that's what happened in one of our scenarios early on in this demo. Uh, not 100% sure. I would have to go back and watch it or just roll the ability checks to make a judgment call on that. But, uh, all right. Passing sticks. I, I think they're, they're quite fun. Are they better than the passing action figures? No. They're just a, a, an alternative. They work for me because clearly they don't hurt my back. And uh, I enjoy the head math of trying to turn those dials and, and try to place the ball in such a position to where you can make the catch but your opponent cannot. Or where you, or as a defender, trying to anticipate where that ball could be thrown, what the quarterback, the coach of, your, uh, of the opposing team might have, what tricks they might have under their sleeve in order to try to make a completion. I enjoy that. With the, you know, with the passing quarterback, it's just uh, the ball is in his hands, and then a, a nanosecond later, the ball was either caught or dropped or intercepted. So, My own personal preference is passing sticks. However, uh, I totally understand why people enjoy the passing and kicking action figures. Well, if you made it this far into this video, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching these, and uh, I will uh, talk to you again real soon.